Joining us now is Joyce Helmick. She is the president of the Mississippi Association of Educators. Joyce, thank you for joining us on At Issue. Uh, tell us what uh, the Mississippi Association of Educators, MAE, what, what is it? Mississippi uh, Association of Educators is a professional organization. We have members all across the state. Um, we work for professional development, for advocacy for our teachers and our students, um, and it's just a wonderful group of teachers who use their voice. And you yourself uh, were a teacher for many years, were you? I not? was a teacher for 37 years in public schools in Mississippi, and I uh, have been president of MAE for three years. What is MAE's position on reworking the Mississippi Adequate Education Program? First of all, we think the Mississippi Adequate Education Pro Program is a student-based program. And it was developed in 1997 by lawmakers, education professionals, and stakeholders. It was also reviewed in 2005. The problem with it is that it has not been funded but two times since its inception. So we think it's a good formula, but it's not been funded, so we cannot make sure. We're not sure that it's a it works or not. So you would not be in favor of reworking a formula because it's it's not truly been tested? Right. It's 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 a uh, it it's been uh, uh, worked on by professionals and it uh, according to them it works. But we don't know because it's not been fully funded. What do you know about this uh, this outfit that's been hired to look at it? Edbuild. Uh, Edbuild is a billion dollar company who has uh, come and paid half of their fee to come into Mississippi and look at this formula and the way we do things here. Um, the CEO has uh, is on record for talking about in uh, the um, bankruptcy of schools. So our question is, do they want to come in? Why are they coming here? This uh, billion dollar school, I mean billion dollar business that is charter school business. Are they trying to bring charter, uh, charter schools into Mississippi? Do you think they have an agenda or do you think the Republican leadership in the legislature that hired them uh, has an agenda that's not in the best interest of Mississippi students? Um, we think that they are, yes we do, we think that they are coming here to look at our schools to possibly expand charter schools. Uh, the formula that we have works. I mean, I mean, we, we, we know that we have a good formula for our students. It has not been funded. So the, the responsibility of our lawmakers is to ensure that all of our students have proper funding so that they can all be successful no matter what, where they are. We have a funding crisis in our state and if our viewers want to look at that funding crisis, they can go to maetoday.org forward slash funding crisis and they can actually look at uh, how that their district has been affected by this funding crisis. Aside from fully funding the existing MAEP formula, what would you recommend that the governor, that lawmakers do to, uh, to correct the education problems in our state? In my term as president of the Mississippi Association of Educators, I have traveled from north to south and east and west, and I have been in many, many schools in our state. I have been in high-performing districts, and I've been in low-performing districts. I want to invite our governor and our other leaders to come with me so that I can show them these high-performing districts in these high-performing schools and what is working in those schools. And then I want to take them to the low-performing schools and I want to let them see that what we need in those schools is the resources. And the only way to get those resources is to fund our schools so that they, all the students in the low performing districts can have the same resources and the same advantages that our high performing school districts have. Well if MAEP was created to sort of equalize all the districts to make sure that some were not getting left behind while others were getting more funding, uh, how do we have a situation like you described? Uh, we don't, we haven't funded it. So we don't know, we don't have the funding for those low performing districts and the poor districts because we have not funded that. We've not provided those resources for um, for those districts. 
Well, we have just gotten through the Mississippi Department of Education a, a, a new batch of data regarding uh, school accountability in the various districts and schools. And in some districts, we see some, some tremendous disparities uh, on the line of what you're describing, where you, you have some schools that might be performing as an A and some in an F within the same district. How does that happen, and, and what do you do to, to fix that? Well, uh, as I said, we can, we can go to these districts, okay, and we can look at that school that is not performing. So go to the school and find out what it is. Look at the students and where they're coming from. Look at the involvement of the parents and look at the involvement of the community. And uh, we, have, we have, within my own district, we have schools that are high performing. They have, uh, the students are all doing well. And we have another school in that same district that is not performing um, as well as others. Um, so we have, we go to that school and we look at it and we see where the problems are. We look at the students. Some of the students are coming to school um, um, without breakfast or they're not uh, clothed properly. Um, and, and maybe they haven't had a good night's rest at the evening in the night before because of situations at home. There are a lot of, of things that affect a student's learning. So if we can look at that as a whole in that school, also look at our teachers um, and, and how the, what kind of professional development they're receiving there. Now in this, in the district that I speak of, uh, the, the uh, superintendent and um, uh, the leaders went to the school and said, what do we need? They hired a principal and the principal said, I'll tell you what we need. And uh, they hired new, uh, more interventionists for the reading program. They developed a reading program. The team worked on it. The whole team worked on it. And the district provided that. The district has technology. It has the money for technology. And now it's providing technology-based instruction for that school because that's what they can afford. But we go, we take that. Now that district has provided that for that school and that school is now performing. But other districts don't have that advantage. Is so. this, is, it sounds like it could be a multi-level problem where you have the issue of leadership and of accountability among teachers and principals and superintendents in addition to the need for money. Do we have some problems where even if you throw money at the problem, that won't necessarily cure all the problems without the right leadership? Uh, I agree with that. We do have, we do, we do have some leadership problems in in our districts. However, it has been my experience that the majority of our leaders are ready to go to work, and our teachers are ready to work. They spend hours at the school working with the students, way past the time that they are that school's out. But if if they don't have the resources to work with, then you know, yes, this is a great. That where I was talking about, that principal knew what she wanted and knew, you know, what she felt like would help, and that everybody bought into that. But if she had been in that school where they had not provided her with those resources, what would she do? And that I think is one of our our biggest problems. It's not so much our leadership and not so much our uh, educators is. Uh, uh, the funding. And also I want to add that we have so many districts in our state where the te we have a, a teacher shortage. We have districts that cannot provide a qualified teacher in each classroom. Now I visited with a district this past week, a large well-to-do district. The superintendent told me he has four positions that are not yet filled. It is almost the end of October, and we have four positions in that school that are not filled. If that district that is very large and in a great area cannot put a qualified teacher in every classroom, what about all of our rural uh, districts? We are not paying our educators enough to go into these schools and stay there and uh, re be uh, recruited into this profession and stay in this profession. That's another issue. 
Now that Ed Build has been hired and will be looking at the uh, formula and making recommendations to the legislature, what's your prediction on what the outcome of all of that is going to be? First of all, I don't want Ed Bill to come in and make any decisions about our state and our students. Uh, we need to solve our problems ourselves, and we could do that if we looked at um, at the issues. Um, I am um, uh, very concerned that this uh, billion-dollar company that is a charter school company is coming in to dump more charter schools into our state instead of giving us the chance to solve our problems and to fix our public schools and make them successful for every child in this state. Joyce Helmick, president of the Mississippi Association of Educators, thank you. Thank you.